In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the BeaglePrint remote print host and time-lapse camera from Mintian. So big shout out to Mintian for sending me this thing. And you may have already seen some other videos about the BeaglePrint camera on YouTube. It's been out for a little while now, but unlike other YouTubers, I do not just take a product and make a video in a day just to get through that. I test it for months at a time before I bring a video like this to you guys. And if I don't, I always disclose it right at the beginning. So in this particular case, I've spent quite a bit of time with this thing and we'll get to my opinion at the very end of this video. But at the beginning, I'm gonna walk you guys through the unboxing. I'm gonna walk you guys through a firmware upgrade, a 3D printed upgrade for this thing that I designed as well. And we'll get into the performance and features of this unit here. So let's get started. We'll do a very quick unboxing here and you're not gonna find too many surprises inside of this box. You'll be greeted with the instruction manual and behind that you'll find the Beagle print camera and then behind some of that packaging you'll find all of the necessary cables and the power supply and that's everything you need. To get your new device set up, you're gonna to need to download the Beagle print app and then sign up for an account. Now I have no affiliation with this company so don't ask me what they do with your information but you don't have to give up a whole lot of information, pretty much just your location, your email address, and that's enough to get you started. They will send a one-time passcode to your email address and you're gonna to need to type that in, head back into the login page, and now you can log in. The app will request permissions to files and media, and I'm assuming that's for the G-code files that you can upload from your phone. So I went ahead and hit allow. Then you're gonna to need to add a device head on over into AP configuration, and then you need to plug in your camera and give it power. Use the included USB-C cable and power adapter, and the lights on the back should flash on, the red power light will come on, and then the green Wi-Fi light will come on. And then you will hear the following. Camera is ready for AP configuration. Back in the app, you can now check off, yes, I heard the voice, click on next. Now it's gonna ask for location permissions, and then you're gonna to need to type in your Wi-Fi SSID and password, hit next. Next, the camera will create a Wi-Fi hotspot and you'll have to connect to that directly with your phone. Hit yes, I have connected to that, and then it will set up the network. Successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. After that, I found I had to power cycle the camera and close and reopen the app, and of course, reconnect to my original internet connection and then I could head on into the camera settings and then click on camera information and take note of the IP address because we're gonna need that later on to connect with our computer browser. And I know you're eager to get printing, but we should update the firmware. Remove the USB cable from the camera, remove the SD card, and then head on over to the downloads page. I'll put a link to that in the video description down below. We're gonna download the latest firmware and copy it over into the root directory of that SD card. In a minute, we're gonna be putting the SD card back into the camera and powering it up, but there's a few important things to take note of here. And the first one is that the power-up cycle might take about one to two minutes until the LEDs start lighting up. And the second one is that the whole procedure will take about three minutes. And the last one is do not power off during this process. And so basically it's just be patient while this process is taking place. It would seem that the Beagle Print team is very active with providing new firmware updates, so it's a very good idea to check this out because a lot of new features are unlocked with the newer firmware updates. The camera is upgrading. Please wait for one minute. The camera will be restarted automatically. A few moments later. Successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. After the firmware update, I did another power cycle typed in the IP address in my browser window that we recorded earlier. The default username and password is just admin and admin, and then you're in the Beagle Print dashboard. Before printing anything, it's very important to head into the settings because the time-lapse videos are turned on by default. There's a very important setting in here, which is the retraction length when the print head moves out of the way for the camera to do the time-lapse. And since I have a custom Ender 3 with a direct drive on there, I'm changing that retraction length from five millimeters to 0.75 millimeters so that my hot end does not jam. Now you're gonna head back into the dashboard and there's a tab that says printable files list and this is where you can upload a G-code file. And so I've just uploaded the very well-renowned XYZ calibration cube. I can hit print and the printing process will begin. You'll notice there are other tabs for the temperature curves as well as the status and control. 
Overall, the dashboard has a very similar look and feel to Octoprint, and so if you've ever used that, you should have no problem navigating this dashboard. Once your print has finished, you can click on the time-lapse videos tab. You can directly download the time-lapse, and this is my favorite feature of the Beagle Print. It combines all of the time-lapse photos and automatically creates an MP4 file for you. To get the most out of the camera and to get better time-lapse footage, the camera position is quite important. So I needed a more versatile camera mounting solution, so I set out to design something a little bit better specifically for the Beagle Print camera. I have a very inexpensive tripod, and so what I did was design a mount integrating the Beagle camera base with the tripod mount. It's a very simple two-part design, and if you just flip the Beagle camera upside down, you'll see the base has three screws holding this bottom plate in place. With the three screws moved, you can just pop off that plate, and it's going to be replaced with the new adapter that I've just printed. And so there's a little notch there in the bottom that lines up with the notch on this part here. The ring sits inside of the groove and the new plate simply fits on the bottom and the three screws go back into their original position. With the new adapter, the camera is still able to rotate as it originally did. And with the new mounting base, the Beagle Print camera can now fit on these tripods with this cam lock feature. If you guys wanna make your own, I'll put a link to the files in the video description down below. One thing to keep in mind when positioning your Beagle Print camera is the focal length is set to about 20 centimeters by default. Now there is a way to extend the focal length and I'm gonna put a link to that article down in the video description below. Now we'll take a look at a few more time-lapse videos with the new camera mount. And you can see here, this was intended to be a toy boat hull and it was supposed to be printed in vase mode, but I figured in spiral vase mode, it probably wouldn't trigger the layer change and then you wouldn't get a proper time-lapse. So I just printed it with 0% infill and regular layers. I tried my best to adjust for the proper focal length as well as providing adequate lighting. And you can see here that the video quality of the time-lapse is fairly decent. On the box, it says the Beagle print resolution is up to 1080p, so you be the judge. One other thing that we can experiment with here to try and improve the video quality is to head on over into the settings and take a look at the video format. So the codec is H264, and there's a note underneath that says this compressed video comes with potentially lower quality. So we're gonna switch it over to the MJPEG and see if this makes a difference. This time lapse that you're watching here has been shot with the new settings, and I would say that there's an ever so slight improvement in video quality, but I definitely wouldn't say that it's a drastic improvement. I'm not an expert videographer by any means, but I did follow some basic rules when setting up these shots, and I would say that we're getting probably as close to as good as it's gonna get with this camera. In all things considered, especially the price, I would say that the outcome is overall fair and acceptable. After having used this camera for a little while, it made me sit and think about why I had never really utilized time-lapse photography in the past for my YouTube videos. Going forward, I should really have no excuse considering how easy this thing is to use. Lastly, before moving on to my final thoughts, one other noteworthy feature here is the camera's night vision capabilities. On the front of the camera, there is an IR sensor, and as you can see, it does a fantastic job in the total darkness of my basement. Now, alternatively, in the settings, you can change the black and white video mode to color night vision. Now, unfortunately, in total darkness, the color night vision doesn't really work all that great. It's more like color afternoon vision because you will need a little bit of ambient light to at least see something. And so what I'm doing here is opening and closing the door to the adjacent room where I'm letting in a little bit of ambient light. And I should stress that it is only a little bit of ambient light, so you don't need a whole lot. But as you can see, the image is still pretty grainy and you're not getting a whole lot of colors with that color night vision. It is better than nothing, but it is important to manage your expectations here with what's possible in very low lighting conditions. And so overall, I would say that the night vision feature is going to be most useful for remote monitoring of your prints, and you're probably not going to use it for the time-lapse feature unless you want black and white time-lapse videos. 
And so that brings us to the end of this video where I'm gonna give you guys my overall opinion of this thing after having used it for several months. And so the purpose of this is to obviously replace a Raspberry Pi and Octoprint. And I think it does a great job of that at a very reasonable price because lately, if you guys have been paying attention, the prices of Raspberry Pis have shot through the roof. And on top of that, even if you plan on running Octoprint, then there's the manual setup. You obviously have to load it on there. That's gotten easier in recent years, but it's still a little bit of a hassle, whereas this thing just works out of the box. And then you have to buy all the other stuff for the Raspberry Pi, like the power adapter, SD card, a camera if you want to do any sort of remote monitoring or time lapses and you got to get into even 3D printing a case for your Raspberry Pi or purchasing one. So there's a lot of extra little pieces of the puzzle. This thing just works straight up out of the box and that's one of the big strengths is its ease of use. As you guys saw at the beginning, setting it up was extremely easy. So I think that's a very strong point for this unit here. As well, I found over several months it's been extremely reliable for me. I haven't had any sort of weird behavior out of it. They're constantly providing firmware updates, so there's new features being unlocked. And like I said, it's just been reliable, so I haven't had any problems. That's definitely one of the strengths of this unit here. And finally, one of the last features I really like about this is its night vision capabilities. As you guys saw, the quality of the video capture at night in total darkness is excellent with that IR sensor at the front of the camera. So I think it does a really good job of that, especially for a unit at this price point. Now, despite all of those great things being said, I still think there is some room for improvement. And the first thing is the app. Now, truthfully, over the course of several months, I pretty much only used the app to do the initial setup and to remotely view my prints as they were going on. But every once in a while, when I opened the app, it would lock up my phone and I have to do a hard reset on my phone, which was a little annoying. Now, it could just be my phone and maybe this isn't a problem for other users. And perhaps I should be looking for updates for the app in the future, but that's just something worth mentioning. And it's also worth mentioning though that the prints themselves, so this unit connected to the printer, uh, did not freeze. It was just strictly the app. It was just more of an annoyance than anything else, um, but the print itself kept running and that was very reliable. Now, the other thing that was a little annoying that I think they could easily upgrade is the dashboard. So the dashboard in the, if you wanna call it file management area, I didn't find a way to create subfolders. And maybe that's, again, just me, but I don't see any options in there for creating folders or subfolders where you can organize your G-code files. And for me, when I have a ton of files, one big long list, it's just very inconvenient to go through. I'd prefer to be able to stay organized and group my G-code files based on the projects that I'm doing and working on. So I think that's a feature that they could easily add. And the last thing is just the quality of the part while doing time-lapse videos. And that's not necessarily a knock specifically against this thing here. This is just a limitation in general when doing time-lapse videography with 3D printing, because usually the hot end or print head has to be moved away from the part in order to take that picture of the thing that you're trying to build a time-lapse for. Now, during that process, there is a retraction. And if you guys do a deep dive into how that works, you're not really creating any sort of negative pressure uh, in the hot end. So you're not really sucking filament up, but you're doing the best you can to prevent that hot end from oozing. But depending on the length of time that the print head is away from that part, you are gonna get a little bit of oozing. And as the print head moves back to resume the print for the next layer, you're always gonna get a little bit of a zit or blob on your print. Perhaps some people have done a very good job at tuning that out. I truthfully didn't spend a whole lot of time on that. So I do have zits and blobs on some of my prints that I did use the time-lapse feature on. So it's a minor annoyance that I had to deal with. So after all of that being said, would I recommend this thing? And the answer is absolutely yes. I think it's great value for the money. I'm gonna be using it in the future to create time-lapse content for my YouTube videos. So shout out again to Mintian. Thank you so much for sending me this little gadget. You guys, I definitely recommend that you check them out. Check out my website, embracemaking.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and any of the prints or any of the links that I mentioned in this video, you can always find them in the video description down below. See you guys next time.